I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. What do I believe? We believe in Jesus Christ. I believe if we put 100% faith in God to take care of you, He will. I believe that with God, all things are possible. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Oh, I believe in faith. I believe Heavenly Father loves me. I believe in hope because of Jesus Christ. I believe through Christ, everyone can find joy. Okay, welcome back to another episode of The Bonfire. We're so excited to be here with you. We're so excited for this episode. My name is Elder Babcock. I'm from Arizona. I have seven siblings and I love Tennessee. We're actually here with our co-host Frank, Frank Furness. And the really cool thing about Frank is he is a fellow believer in Christ. He loves Jesus Christ. And I guess just one attribute um, I, can, I can just look at you and tell is how much faith you have. Can you, can you introduce yourself, Frank? Let's, let's yeah. hear about yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Frank Furness. I'm from South Africa, Cape Town. I'm in the band Frank and I. And we're just recording an album here um, in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm born again Christian. Love Jesus with all my heart. And yeah, in a nutshell. Gosh, Frank, you are an incredible man. We're so excited to learn a little bit about your story. And that's what we're going to go to right now. Hi guys, my name is Frank Furness. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my story, how I got into music. Um, I'm from the band Frank and I from South Africa. And um, I was about 16 years old. I grew up in a Dutch Reformed church. And, um, and I got born again when I was uh, in that time. Um, so I was staying in the, in the cottage outside of my parents' house because I was a drummer back then and played electric guitar. And I was listening to a lot of dark music, um, you know, a lot of Marilyn Manson and Metallica and stuff. And um, so the one day I was, I always kept my, my Fender Strat in the main house in my folks' house um, because it was just safer in South Africa, they steal a lot. And so the one day I wanted to jam and I went into the house and I got my guitar. When I came back, the door was locked from the inside. Um, and I, I tried to, I always kept my curtains closed because I watched too many scary movies. Um, and uh, so I couldn't see what's going on, but someone was definitely in my room because the, the door was locked with the key from the inside. And um, so I couldn't get in for the whole night. I went uh, to sleep um, in one of the guest bedrooms. And in that night, God started to work with me. And, um, and the next day I had to go to school. I had to get my school bag and my, my books and everything. So I broke um, a window and I climbed in. And as I'm climbing in, the, the, the key is still in the door from the inside. So whoever was in the, the room was still in the room. And I looked under the bed, in the um, closet, nothing. Um, and back then, this was like the late 90s. Um, we listened to cassette tapes and I wanted to play the cassette tape over my hi-fi and it wouldn't play. And I, and I took it out and it was destroyed completely. And I immediately knew God was saying, this is it. No more dark music. And I knew God was calling me into the music industry and, and I was like starting to pray and I was like, Lord, I need answers because this is kind of freaky. Um, and I got invited about a year later to a, a big youth camp, Christian youth camp, and no one knew anyone there. It was different schools, different towns. And, um, and the one day this preacher was, was saying, there's someone in the audience of a multitude of kids. Um, that this and this and this has happened to you and, and it was very specific stuff and I knew God was saying that, uh, you know this is me and my, my best friend next to me she said hey Frank that's you and I'm like oh man and the guy said come and see me afterwards if this is you but I mean there's hundreds of kids um, and I went to the guy and when I walked into his office he's like do you play guitar he didn't know me um, so I was like, uh, yeah, how do you know that? And he's like, no, the Holy Spirit just told me that and he's calling you into the music industry. So I was freaked out and, um, you know, I, I thought he'd spoken to someone, but he didn't. So I went uh, back home and I, you know, closed the doors, closed everything in the, in the lounge. My folks was um, working and I just sat there and I, was, and I was like, God, if this is you, you need to speak to me because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to move until you speak to me. And then I had this vision. It was almost like this 
heavenly thing going on and um, and Jesus gave me a, a golden electric guitar a Strat Fender Strat and he says I want you to win back music for me um, and so I thought I was crazy uh, but it was so real it was so um, you know vivid and so my dad came home and he was like um, Frank you wouldn't believe what happened so I'm like what and he says um, he was at his work his, his office and the Holy Spirit told him just to uh, lock the door and to pray and he confirmed the whole vision he didn't know anything that was going on and God confirmed that vision and um, and, stra and years after that God um, started to open up doors and we came to Nashville just to make a long story short and, and when I was 16 I listened to a lot of Bon Jovi and I said to the Lord Lord I want to not preach to the choir but I want to reach guys like Bon Jovi and in 2019 we recorded an album Johan Brits and, and myself and Billy Falcon and um, and it was crazy. A couple of months later, bon, John Bon Jovi phoned, and he says, "Guys, I want to sponsor the first year of your management. I want to get behind you guys financially." And then it was COVID, and then um, so nothing happened in COVID. And a couple of months ago, we got the phone call again, and and some of the guys said, "When are you coming to Nashville?" And here we are in Nashville. So God is so is so in the detail, um, but He's such a real God and He's such an amazing God. And now it's almost like a full circle from when I was 16, I'm uh, turning 43 on Saturday. Um, and sometimes God takes takes time, but He sets things in motion and He prepares you and He, he, he works on your character um, um, before He releases the promises of God. Um, because he's, he's not interested in, in fame or money or music or anything like that. He's, he's interested in character. He's interested in a relationship with us. And for the last, I don't think it was like 15 plus years, he's, he's literally been working just on that, that uh, on my heart. Because sometimes our heart is, we have idle dreams and, and your dream can become an idol. And he needs to sort our hearts out so that it's not about the dream, but it's about him. It's about his kingdom. And, um, and you know, it's so crazy. In that time, I thought, oh man, you know, God, I'm doing missionary work in South Africa. There's nothing music in my life at the moment and and years later he's just so faithful you know so god doesn't forgive if you sometimes we go through a season that we're thinking oh man god forgot about me this this dream i had you know it's, it's forgotten nothing is happening but like with david like with joseph you know they all had these dreams david was anointed as king um daniel was going through some stuff and even the book of esther we see that at the right time when it's god's timing he breaks through for you and um and he makes stuff happen but sometimes we are so impatient in the processes but that processes is so crucial um because that um gives us that stability in our faith and um, because if you go through hell and if you go through deserts and and seasons and um, that you have to trust in the lord um otherwise nothing's going to happen then like like david i mean he had to flee from Saul. He had to hide in the cave of Adullam. But that give, gave him longevity and stability. And the moment that he got his promise, the moment God made him king, he was uh, he never lost his blessing again. Same with Joseph, same with all the guys. So just a quick encouragement. Wow, Frank. That was incredible. That was just an incredible story. I have a couple questions, honestly. Yeah, sure. So I guess maybe something about myself that's honestly pretty negative is I look at situations sometimes and I can only find the negative. But something that really stood out to me in that story is especially like the whole Bon Jovi COVID situation. How, Frank, were you able to take a positive spin out of that? That's a good question. Um, you know what? We came back uh, from the States to South Africa and everything was just locked down. You literally had an hour in a day to go and do your shopping. So it was like it was like a movie, you know, like a yeah. like a horror movie or something. And um, so there was a lot of questions, but I knew God was up to something. And in that COVID time, um, just straight after the lockdown, God opened up uh, the schools for us. So we had the privilege of going into the schools with a band um, and literally evangelizing to the kids and telling people about Jesus. And I almost want to say thousands of kids gave their heart to Jesus. Um, so I think it was divinely orchestrated. I think so. So that helped me in that in the process because I saw, okay, well, God had a bigger plan than just um, Bon Jovi at that point. He wanted wow. to get these king, these kids into the kingdom. 
Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> Frank, that is so impressive. Okay, another question. So I know you mentioned something about a golden guitar, guitar right? Yeah. Is that right? That's what, right. What yeah. is like the significance behind golden? I think um, the, the reason God said golden is because it, uh, gold, um, uh, you know, it, it almost like signifi is significant for purity. And he was telling me, because I'm going into the music industry, my music needs to be pure. It needs mm. to be for him and not tainted by the world stuff or by, you know, by arrogance or idols or anything like that. So I think that's, that's why with a gold guitar and I'm a lead guitarist. Um, so at that stage, I was practicing hours a day just um, uh, on the electric guitar. And so that was kind of relevant for me. That's incredible. Okay. So I guess another question that I had, right? Today, there's like, there's a lot of Christians out there, right? A ton, a ton, a ton of Christians. Um, but I would say overall, like Christian content, Christian music isn't the most popular content. Mm -hmm. And so um, I guess in the side of maybe like money, right? How were you able, like, what, what is really your driving force to make Christian content, even mm. though like just right off the bat, it's not mm. the most popular? Good question. Um, money is, was never an issue because God always took care of us. But, um, you know, why we do the Christian thing, I, I won't say we're a, we're a gospel band or a Christian band, but we're a bunch of Christians in a band. And so that's why we don't want to be irrelevant because a lot of Christian bands, um, is irrelevant you know they they're, they're only in their circles but we want to reach people um, uh, that's not necessarily going to go to church that doesn't know Jesus so that's why we're, we're writing all the songs with Christian contact and we're trusting the Holy Spirit um, just to touch the people you know that's not necessarily going to go to church on a Sunday gosh I love that I love that I love that okay Frank couple more questions you're just so fascinating to me you, you are just mind blowing. you are incredible Frank <laughs> you are so awesome um with that what right there's like different topics in in just Christian beliefs right we got faith we got repentance mm. we got even like baptism what is your favorite topic to sing about and why well I think it's just that relationship with Jesus and being born again and that that one-to-one -one, you know because a lot of times we can be religious, we can we can touch some of the big topics, but when it comes to a relationship with Jesus, I think that's the world is very much open to that. They're not necessarily open to religiousness or mm -hmm. even baptism or even this. Mm -hmm. It's all amazing topics and it's all mm -hmm. very, very relevant. But that one-to-one -one relationship with Jesus, I love singing about that because everyone has the deep desire, even if they don't say it, they might tell you, no, we, we don't believe. But <laughs> yeah. deep down, you know, when they go and lie on their beds at night, they, they have a yearning for that. I love that. I love that. And honestly, Frank, I just want to commend you because something that I can just see just looking at you is you truly have a strong relationship with your Savior, you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and overall, great example to myself. And we really appreciate Thank you. you. Um, what would you say is maybe... Um, I guess where did where did your testimony start in Jesus Christ? How old were you? Oh, I was uh, sixteen. Um, yeah, I was sixteen. I was in a very religious church called the Dutch Reform Church, and um, you know it was like you go to church, you leave the same. You know everyone's worried about what they're going to eat afterwards. They're not really paying attention to the message. Yeah. So no <laughs> miracles. And when I was sixteen, I was like sick of this, and I and I read through the Bible at some point, and I was asking questions, and I'm like God. I, I know there's more than this, you know, and I was reading the book of Acts uh, a couple of years after that, and I was starting to to nag on God. I'm like, I want to see miracles. I want the deeper stuff, and I want to know you intimately. And that's why the first, um, I was studying, um, and um, I saw a guy with a broken arm before me, and, and he just broke his arm very badly. It was like, you know, bad. Yeah. And God said, Oh, the Holy Spirit said, pray for this guy. And I was like, there's no ways I'm praying for this guy. So the, the prompting got stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And at some stage, I was like, okay, I just want to, I need to be obedient mm -hmm. and then I can leave. Um, didn't think the guy's going to get healed. And I went to the guy and I'm like, hey man, can I pray for you? And didn't want me to pray for him really? at all. He was like, no, just call a doctor, you know, oh, and it was like, what? <laughs> yeah, no <and> way. <laughs> I felt like an idiot. And, um, and second time I asked, hey man, can I pray for you? And it's like, no, 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 no. Third time, I think he just wanted to get rid of me. So he's like, yeah, okay, just pray for me. And so I prayed for the guy and the next moment, this guy falls over and I saw something happen and his eyes is big. I don't know what's happening. And I, and I told him, listen, dude, we're going to pray for you and, and we're going to trust Jesus and the Holy Spirit to, to heal your arm. Is it okay? And he went like, 
Okay. <laughs> and uh, so I prayed for him, and the next moment there was this <coughs> sound. Mm -hmm. This guy started to freak out and running around and doing push-ups, and he was healed. I freaked out because I did <laughs> not see that coming. No because way. Because all of a yeah. sudden, you know, you went from being religious unto, oh, no. Well, not, oh, no, but, oh, my goodness, God is real, and all the stuff in the Bible is real. It's not just for that time. And so that was kind of a, a eye-opener. Wow. Um, Definitely. In a nutshell, yeah. <laughs> you have so much faith, Frank. You demonstrate so much faith. And I think the story that you just shared with us is a great example of how Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ truly work. Um, I think just a common ideology today is that there are no miracles. And mm. I can testify to everybody watching that God is present, Jesus Christ is present, and there are miracles today. Um, and Frank is an incredible musician. So now we're going to take a break and we're going to hear Frank sing and perform. I was there, I saw it with my own eyes I was there when he walked out on the sea This bread, I swear it fed 5,000 Yeah, you could say it to the night, but now it's they can't tell me crowd when their choice was another when the king knelt down to wash our feet I was there heard him say throw the first stone yeah you can say it that now but now was they can't tell me I was there
Wow, Frank. <laughs> oh my gosh. No wonder you're famous. That was so good. Can you tell Thank us you. a little bit about the song? Yeah, sure. Um, the song uh, is called um, I Was There and I wrote it with a guy called Billy Falcon mm. um, and Johan Brits. Uh, you, Billy's from New York. He's, he's the songwriter for Bon Jovi and Johan Brits is uh, my best friend and we've been making music for the last seven years or so. He's from Cape Town, wow. South Africa. And yeah, we just, we, we were sitting in a room and uh, the song just came and we thought, why not s uh, write a song about Peter's perspective of about Jesus, mm. you know, the crucifixion, the, the Garden of Gethsemane, and just um, write something a bit more. Y you always hear, um, you know, the, the, the normal way of telling the story. And we just thought, hey, man, let's just give it a fresh perspective, basically. That's incredible. I love it. I love how it also talks about Peter. Something that Peter just demonstrates in the Bible. We love the Bible. I love the Bible so much. Absolutely. Is, is faith. Yep. right? Peter had so much faith. Jesus Christ's disciples had so much faith. And what is faith? Um, Hebrews 1.11 has an incredible definition of faith. Um, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence mm -hmm. of things not seen. And that's exactly what you have, Frank. You have so much faith, so much faith. Um, but you. not only is faith just believing, it's also action. Um, a couple of things we can do to show our faith is reading our scriptures, saying our prayers, going to church, and mm -hmm. Peter, James, John, Frank, y'all are some great examples of faith. Um, so with that, every, every, every bonfire, we actually share a little invitation or we invite people to do some things. Frank, you want to you wanna invite? Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's so awesome what you're saying about faith, you know, like, um, sometimes, you know, you know, we experience things, we experience the Holy Spirit, but... Um, you know, faith is to step out and do it. And I think uh, you know, I've heard a very, very wise man once said, you know, our breakthrough sometimes is at the end of our obedience. Um, Benjamin O'Day said that. And it's true, you know, because if uh, Paul said, you know, show me your faith without works and I'll show you my faith with works. Because sometimes, you know, um, works is, uh, or faith is nothing if you don't make it real and if you don't step it out. So I want to encourage everyone just to read the Bible. And, and you know, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, um, take a chance. You know, you're not going to lose anything. You're going to gain. And just step out of the boat onto the water because Peter stepped out of the water um, on the, and he was the only guy with a testimony of having a, in st walking on water. I mean, no one in the history has got that. Um, and surely there's a lot of reasons not to do that. But you know what? God is, is, is um, absolutely loves faith. Actually, there's a scripture that says, there's no pleasing God without faith. So um, if you really want to serve God, you have to at some point take a risk. But it's awesome. God will never, never drop you. He's going to catch you. Thanks, Frank. I, I, I would invite the same thing. Step out of your boat. Um, attend a local congregation. We have congregations all over the United States, actually all over the world. Step out of the boat. Step out of your comfort zone. And, and go to one of these. Please, please come worship uh, worship with us. Excuse me. I know for a fact that you will feel the Holy Spirit. You will feel God's love. Thank you all so much for jo joining us here on the bonfire. Thank you so much, Frank, for your Thank time. Y'all you. are incredible. Can't wait to see you next time. They say sometimes you win some. Sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing back I've stood on this stage night after night Reminding the broken it'll be alright But right now, oh right now I just can't It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down But what will I say When I'm held to the flames Like I am right now I know you're able And I know you can Save through the fire With your mighty hand takes a little faith to move a mountain for good thing a little 
faith is all I have right now. Oh, God, when you choose to make mountains unmoved.